Hello, artists. Here is Miss Dolores. I don't know if you remember, but a while ago I made a video that was an introduction to collage. Now I think we can make something a little bit more ambitious. So if you haven't watched that video where I explain the basics for making a collage, I recommend you watch that video before you watch this one. I thought we can make a portrait. A portrait is a picture you make of someone, and usually, but not always, a portrait goes from head, here, from the top of the head, to shoulders, here. Sometimes here, sometimes here. If it is a portrait you are making of yourself, you are making a self-portrait. Now, let's take a look at an artist who makes wonderful portraits all with collage. Artist Megan Coyle creates her collages with paper she cuts from magazines. She builds the image, in this case portraits, by carefully selecting the papers, their colors, arranging and layering them to represent faces of real people. Pay attention to the detail in them is really remarkable. Wow! And it's all magazine paper. A great way to repurpose the paper. To repurpose means to give something a new use. In this case, Megan is repurposing the magazine paper to create art. Let's start a portrait. I am going to use two videos for this project. In this one, I am going to show you how to start the portrait. In the next one, I am going to show you how to finish it. I have three different kind of papers that I collect to make collages, and I keep them in separate bags. One for newspaper and magazine paper, one for recycled cardboard, and scraps of construction paper from other projects. First thing is to choose the base paper, where you are going to glue all the pieces. You can use a regular paper or construction paper. Or what I am going to do today, I will use a cardboard from a box, in this case a cereal box. The color doesn't matter really, because I am planning to cover it. I already arranged different blues from magazines to create a background for my portrait, that is what is behind the person. Not too much glue, you can use a glue stick. Make sure you press so the pieces stick to the base paper. Otherwise, sometimes the paper gets wet with the glue and rolls out from the paper. I don't need to cover the center because the face will be there. When I finish, I turn the cardboard and cut off the extra paper. I pre-selected some paper that I think will work. If I have all the papers I saved, I can get lost and confused. Today, I will do the head, the ears, the neck, and the shoulders. I am using these magazine papers for the head. I make the head big, so when I add the face features, I have enough space. You can think of an oval as the shape for the head, or an egg, a pear. Now the neck. I make the neck thick. Remember, the neck holds the head, so it's strong. The top part of the body now. I like these colors. The chest and the shoulders. Curvy. I can make a mark with my pencil to cut the paper where I need to. There. I will add the ears. They can be half circles. You see, the papers I chose for the skin are all different, but they are all kind of brown, so they work together well. Glue time. I am using this white plastic to protect the table. The important thing, I said it before, is to glue those pieces that will be in part covered by other pieces, like the ears. Now the neck, because the face and the shirt will be covering part of it. 
I like to use photographs from magazines of things very different from what I am trying to represent. Like sometimes a picture of food can be used to create hair. Or I can make a shirt from a treetop. You can try to match the real color of a skin or use completely different colors like Megan did with this portrait. When I put too much glue, I remove it or spread it out. In my next video, I will add the face features, hair and details. Meanwhile, look at people. Look at their faces. Or look at yourself in the mirror. That's a great way to learn what a face looks like. Ah, uh, remember. I am an artist. Thank <laughs> you.